As you know, sexual reproduction involves two parents, each contributing half of their genetic material to their offspring. The advantage to sexual reproduction is that each individual offspring is genetically different from the others and from the parents. Sexual reproduction in animals results in populations that have genetic variation, a variety of genetic combinations that give each individual its own unique traits. This variation is very important to the survival of the species. Genetic variation provides insurance against extinction. Just in case the environmental conditions were to change drastically, some individuals would surely possess traits that allow them to survive, thus assuring the survival of the species. It's quite an advantage to sexual reproduction. A primitive form of sexual reproduction can even occur amongst unicellular organisms. This primitive form of sexual reproduction is called conjugation. During conjugation, the two cells connect using a thin tube called a pillus. Once the cells are connected, the donor cell transfers a small bit of genetic material to the recipient cell. After the exchange, the cells separate and undergo mitosis to produce genetically unique offspring. In the animal kingdom, sexual reproduction begins with the formation of gametes, egg and sperm. Eggs are produced in organs called ovaries, and sperm are produced in organs called testes. Hermaphrodites have both male and female reproductive organs, so they can produce both egg and sperm. Only the simplest animals are hermaphroditic. Hydra are animals that are hermaphroditic. Their testes produce sperm that are released into the surrounding water. Waves and currents transport the sperm to the ovaries of other hydra where fertilization occurs. Another example of a hermaphrodite is the planarian or flatworm. Earthworms are also hermaphroditic. Both planaria and earthworms cross-fertilize with a partner. Each worm donates sperm and receives sperm during the interaction. Most hermaphrodites possess traits that keep them from self-fertilizing because self-fertilization would not produce the genetic variation that is the whole point of sexual reproduction in the first place. For example, some have egg and sperm develop at different times. Some have ovaries and testes located far away from each other in their bodies. Others rely on water to carry their sperm far away from themselves to other individuals. In order for sexual reproduction to be complete, egg and sperm must fuse during fertilization to produce a zygote. There are two locations where fertilization can take place in animals. Outside the body, as in external fertilization, and inside the body, as in internal fertilization. External fertilization allows the egg and sperm to meet outside of the animal's body. Many fish and amphibians like frogs use external fertilization to reproduce. During external fertilization, the female lays her eggs in the water. Then the male releases his sperm over the eggs. The sperm swim to the eggs and penetrate their outer membrane to fertilize them. Sometimes one or both parents will remain to guard the fertilized eggs. This pair of frogs may look like they are having sex, but actually the male is just hitching a ride on the female's back to ensure that his sperm are released over the eggs immediately. Internal fertilization means that egg and sperm fuse inside the female's body and therefore requires the act of sex. Reptiles like snakes and lizards, birds, and mammals like we humans use internal fertilization to reproduce. Internal fertilization required the evolution of the penis in male animals so they could deposit sperm inside the body of the female. Once sperm enter the female reproductive system, they must swim in search of the egg. Internal fertilization is achieved when a sperm penetrates the egg cell. Internal fertilization was an important step in the evolution of land-dwelling animals since it freed them of their dependence on water for reproduction. Once fertilization has occurred, the zygote will undergo mitosis and begin developing into an embryo. 
In some animals, the embryo will complete its development inside a hard shell laid by the female after mating. The shell gland in the female allows her to produce the shell that protects the embryo from drying out. The hard shell made external development on land possible for animals like turtles, crocodiles, snakes, birds, and even some mammals like the spiny anteater and platypus. Hardened shells are an adaptation allowing an embryo to complete its development outside the female body while still being protected from the dry conditions of a land-based habitat. Internal development means the embryo grows not inside an external egg, but inside a specialized female organ called the uterus. Internal development in the uterus allows animals, mostly mammals, to carry on life activities without having to guard a nest or incubate the eggs. Internal development is advantageous to survival since the uterus provides a more controlled environment while the placenta and umbilical cord provide constant nutrition to the developing embryo. Inside the uterus, embryos are also more protected from predators. You have now received an overview of sexual reproduction in animals. In the next two lessons, we will take an in-depth look at the male and female reproductive systems in humans and the specialized structures that make reproduction possible. <laughs>